Hello and welcome to our presentation of our project Air Mouse for the course Smart Sensing for IoT. In this project, we attempt to create a viable alternative to the conventional mouse, an alternative which is much more intuitive and fun to use. In addition to this interface, we have created a game centered around our input method. The most common hardware input device used to move the cursor is the physical mouse or the trackpad found on our PCs and laptops. However, this is not as direct and intuitive as the touchscreen, which is very hard to find on PCs. We wanted to find a way to interact with our computers using motion through the air in front of it. So, we looked into similar implementations of this idea and came across two major themes. The first was the Kinect way, which uses cameras and special wavelengths of light for localization. It is not a practical alternative, although others have done localization using cameras. These are high resolution cameras with frame rates not commonly found in household PCs. The second were orientation based remotes generally packaged with smart TVs, Chromecast, Amazon Fire Sticks, etc. Some of these cheaper implementations use only a gyroscope and hence require frequent recalibration to work pro properly. In addition to that, such remotes are an additional specialized component that needs to be purchased. We realize that everyone already has a highly instrumented device, their smartphone. Also, all computers are accompanied with a webcam, which we can also use to our advantage. So broadly, we are trying to create an input method that can map motion in front of the screen to motion of the cursor in the screen. We wanted to ensure that this method can run without the need for any specialized equipment given the necessary software. We will be making use of the smartphone, the webcam, a common local network, and of course, a computer to which all this input is being made, all of which is reasonable to assume is available to everyone. Also, the final setup should be comparable in performance to a conventional mouse, and it should offer some advantages in the sense that it will support keyboard input as well, and also it will be operable without the need for a flat surface. We came up with four incremental cases of how to go about giving input to the computer given the system components stated earlier. The first and most obvious was to use that of was to use the webcam alone and track the position of the phone held before it. The phone runs an app that passes the mouse and keyboard inputs via UDP. This had a lot of drawbacks that were immediately obvious. The position measurement was not very accurate, giving rise to jitter, especially the edges of the camera's field of view. And also, at around 3 Hz, the updates were too slow for, to control the cursor effectively. The smartphone has an IMU that can help get a better estimate of the position of the phone in space. However, simply integrating the acceleration twice to get position is disastrous due to the noise in the measurements. So, by making use of a Kalman filter to fuse these two sensors, the webcam and the IMU, we are able to get a better estimate of the position of the phone in space. This position is then directly mapped to the cursor on the screen. In this and the previous method, the cursor will ideally mirror the phone's position. On a completely different side, we have pure orientation control, where changes in the IMU and the phone's orientation from a base orientation is used to move the cursor. This base orientation is got during startup of the app. In the figure, the effect of yawing the phone to move the cursor horizontally is shown. Similarly, pitch will move the cursor vertically. Do keep in mind, this method is usually unaffected, is definitely unaffected by translation of the phone in space, which can cause an uninitiated user to get frustrated. The final case is the superposition of the previous two, where the translational control is afforded by the Kalman filter and the orientation control is added on to it. The translation provides coarse control over the cursor and the orientation a very fine control over the cursor's position. This is the most intuitive as we achieve a laser pointer like control over the cursor where both translation and rotations affect the laser being pointed from the phone to the, to the monitor screen. Now, let us look at the basic idea of a Kalman filter and its implementation in our project. Kalman filter is an optimal state estimator which takes in noisy measurements as inputs, fuses these measurements and gives out a more accurate estimate than the individual measurements. 
Kalman filtering involves estimation of two quantities, covariance of, of the state and the state itself. Estimation of these quantities are mathematically governed by the set of equations present on the screen. Here, matrix F called the state transition matrix and matrix G called the control transition matrix are obtained from basic equations of motion. The vector u is the acceleration measurement from the IMU and the vector z is the position measurement from webcam. We use these to estimate our state matrix x cam. Measurement noise matrix R and the process noise matrix Q required for covariance state estimation are obtained experimentally. This will be described in a couple of slides. A key point to note in the Kalman filter equations is that sequentially both the state and covariance estimations can be divided into prediction and updation stages. Thus a Kalman filter makes continuous estimations of the state by repetitively performing predictions and updations. To implement this filter in our project, we have defined a class with all the necessary attributes. The class has predict and update methods which can be called sequentially and repetitively to make predictions. We instantiate two classes, kfx and the kfy to estimate the x and y positions respectively. These one-dimensional estimations are put together to obtain the final two-dimensional estimation. The plot in the left compares Kalman filter's outputs with the raw position measurement from webcam. We notice that the frequency of Kalman filter output is much higher than the raw position measurement. This is because Kalman filter also uses the IMU data frequency of which is much higher than the frame rate of our webcam. Kalman filter's output is also much more sensitive to small inputs than the raw measurements because the resolution of our webcam is much lesser than our screen resolution. Thus, Kalman filter makes the control of our arrows much smoother and better than using just the raw position measurement. We also note in the plot at the right that Kalman filter's output correlates well with the recorded acceleration value in the IMU when a rare mouse is repetitively moved in the x direction from left to right and vice versa. One point to note specific to the plot in the slide is that there is an observable lag in response of Kalman filter. This anomalous behavior specifically arose in this case as a result of us wanting to log data in a CSV file along with using rare mouse which in turn slowed down our whole computer. This laggy behavior is not observed under normal usage. Experiments were performed to obtain the process noise matrix Q and the measurement noise matrix R. Process noise matrix Q corresponds to the variance in noise in acceleration data. We therefore held our arm still without moving, logged the static noisy acceleration values and found the variance in this log data. As seen in the first plot on the left, the variance turned out to be almost 0.05. Thus, we obtained our process noise value Q to be 0.05. Now, to estimate the measurement noise matrix R, we iterated through different possible values and observed the filter's response when our R mouse is held still. As seen in the histogram at the bottom, we observed minimum standard deviation in mouse position at a measurement noise value R of 5. Thus, the optimal values were found to be measurement noise matrix R being equal to 5 and process noise matrix Q being equal to 0.05. We then verified the choice of these values by observing the filter's step response. On comparison with filters having other pairs of values, the filter having experimentally chosen optimal values performed better as seen in the top right plot. This further solidified our experiment results. To send the various user inputs like clicks, scrolls, keyboard inputs, and most importantly, acceleration and orientation information from the smartphone to the PC client, an Android application was built in Java using Android Studio. It has a functional layout and is designed to behave as much as a conventional mouse in this aspect, with haptic feedback provided whenever the buttons are clicked and also when the initial calibration is complete. The IMU and orientation data are streamed at 50 Hz over UDP to the PC client. The measurement of the state, position, is done using the webcam video processed with OpenCV. We used an object detection deep learning model that performs the object detection and provides a bounding box for the mobile phone. 
It also gives a confidence score, which was then later fed into the Kalman filter as the measurement noise uncertainty, which improved the estimate of all the states. The Python program sits at the heart of our implementation, running on the PC. It receives the UDP data, makes the measurements from the webcam feed, processes this using the Kalman filter, incorporating the IMU inputs, and finally spits out a cursor position and actually moves the cursor to that position. Along with this, other keyboard inputs from the UDP are also made. Multi-threading has been done to ensure these processes can run simultaneously. In the case of the game, a separate thread manages all the operations related to the game. Now, let us have a quick demonstration on the usage of our armos. We have extended the features of our Armos to be used as a controller for a game that we created using Pygame. We have named this game Village Savior. In this game, the character controlled by the user is a warrior trying to protect his village from an alien attack. The warrior has to kill 15 aliens to save his village. The movement and direction of the warrior can be controlled with our Armos. Pressing the left click button in the UDP Center application makes the warrior shoot bullets. The circle around the warrior is his maximum shooting range, so enemies beyond the circle can't be shot directly. Now let us look at a quick demonstration of the game. And that is the end of our presentation. We hope you liked it. We would like to conclude by thanking you for giving us the opportunity to work on this interesting project. Thank you.